Gamescom is happening, and wow, were there lots of announcements. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the top 10 new games of Gamescom 2022. A uh, really quick disclaimer, we are only talking about stuff that was announced specifically here, like Lies of P, Callisto Protocol, Outlast Trials. These were things that were announced way before the show, so we're going to leave that stuff be and get into some completely new stuff. Starting off with number 10, it's Dune Awakening. So the trailer that we got for Dune Awakening uh, doesn't give us anything in terms of gameplay. We do know it's an open world survival MMO, and apparently that's going to put thousands of players on every instance of the planet. The trailer we saw had a hero taking on a giant sandworm. It was a pretty impressive piece of, well, probably CGI to be completely frank. But if it is an indicator as to what it may look like, Dune Awakening could definitely be a very interesting title. We don't have an official release date for this game. We do know it's coming to pretty much all major platforms, so we will be keeping our eyes open. Number 9! Ex-GTA producer Leslie Benzie's new company announced a game called Everywhere. Now, Everywhere is a pretty vague concept, isn't it? So of course they would issue a press release clarifying what the game is. Everywhere seamlessly blends gameplay, adventure, creativity, and discovery in an all-new multi-world gaming experience that redefines how players connect with one another and the digital world around them. Which, ah, crystal clear now, right? Now in the course of the trailer, you see a large amount of different things. Things. Seems like third person shooting, a lot of sci fi, maybe even a little racing. I'm not 100% sure because there's a lot. When they say everywhere, they aren't playing. Now, it's not easy for me to get hyped over something that is vague. I'll say that. So bearing that in mind, it is actually intriguing. Uh, a, there's a lot of top-notch talent on top of Leslie Benzies, who was, a, again, a former GTA producer. And it seems like they're not shying away from color and possibly genre. We certainly weren't told a genre, so who knows? And number eight is Moonbreaker, a new miniature building turn-based digital tabletop strategy game. This one comes to us from Unknown Worlds, the developers behind Subnautica. So right there, you kind of have a lot of different stuff just thrown at you at a single time. Again, it's a tabletop game like Warhammer 40k, and you get to make miniatures and paint them, and the painting is actually a big part of Moonbreaker. Like, there's some element of it that is just weird in a good way, and I think that's kind of what intrigues me about it. I'm not necessarily interested in miniature building, but but what I would think is that somebody who would be interested in that would be more attracted to actually building miniatures. So there's a kind of tactile inertia or life that they give the figurines in battle that I think is kind of appealing. But again, it's, it's quite weird. It's got a, a different charm to it, so to speak. And I think that there may be something to it. It's landing in early access on September 29th. At number seven is Atlas Fallen, a game that looks kind of like a different aesthetic take on what Forspoken is going for. Keeping in mind, we didn't really see a lot of gameplay, more so a sort of CGI film about the world, which was very intriguing. Um, but the gameplay actually kind of reminded me of, like I said, Forspoken, and for some reason of Final Fantasy XV. I don't know if the entire game is going to take place in a desert, but I really do like the desert setting combined with the characters they have. The character design is just fantastic. It reminds me of old school Final Fantasy. That's probably why. Obviously, with a completely different, more modern style, eh, sensibility just reminds me of that for whatever reason. If the scenario that we saw within this little CGI movie is something that could play out within the game, it could end up being a really interesting take on a sort of fast-paced magical action game where you're holding up bridges and fighting big monsters. At number six is The Lords of the Fallen, a kind of soft reboot slash sequel to the 2014 Lords of the Fallen. This is kind of a cheat because, I mean, you could almost say that this was announced not really that long after the original game as Lords of the Fallen 2, but 
we never found anything out about that. And again, 2014 is, uh, it's a while back. As much as I thought, hey, the original was a pretty successful game, you'd think there'd be a sequel. It's kind of been up in the air, so it's also probably not the project that was announced as Lords of the Fallen 2. The Lords of the Fallen takes place a thousand years after the original. So it's an effective reboot for the most part. It's definitely got the look of a Soulsborne type game to me, but we don't really know exactly what this one is about. We do know that the story will involve exploring interconnected realms, Umbral and Axiom, apparently the realms of the living and the dead. The original was also a Soulsborne, Souls-like type game, so reasonable to assume that's where we're coming from here. But in terms of anything specific beyond those things, it's a Soulsborne and interconnected realms. It looks like we're going to have to wait to find out. Going to hit all major platforms sometime in 2023. We will bring you the latest as we know it. And number five is Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game, coming to us from the producer of Friday the 13th, the game. Look, I'm not going to say that we don't all know exactly what kind of game this is based on it's a multiplayer horror game. I think we all know that. But, same time, kind of hard to deny that it's, it's interesting. First off, Killer Clowns from Outer Space is a silly franchise. It's a horror franchise, but a silly one. And it should, in all actuality, make for a silly horror experience that may be markedly different in that it has a more loose, less reasonable base to work with, you know? Like, let's be clear, the weapons in Killer Clowns from Outer Space could potentially be a lot more fun than the weapons in Friday the 13th again, you know? It's gonna land on all major platforms early 2023. And number four is Destiny 2 Lightfall, something that we've not heard anything about in a couple of years. So, well, just to be frank, now we know what the next expansion for Destiny is going to be. It's a cyberpunk one. Apparently the final battle in the Light vs. Dark saga. It has Kallus coming back, fighting side by side with the Witness, attempting to destroy the Traveler, and apparently it's on Neptune, in a cyberpunk city that was hidden away. There is also the addition of a grappling hook and the Strand subclass. It looks like an attempt to perhaps breathe a little bit of life into Destiny 2 after it's been going a very long time. I don't think that's necessarily automatically good, but uh, it looks good. And number three is Where Winds Meet. This looks like a game looking to compete with Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, it's got it beat in terms of the pronunciation ease. Where Winds Meet, super easy to say. It is also a very different looking game. Uh, like it evokes the idea of Ghost of Tsushima, but the aesthetic is also very, very Chinese. Uh, but apparently you can actually choose occupations in this game, like becoming a doctor. You can become like an architect. You can even become like a very good orator, a public speaker who is able to convince NPCs to follow them. These are intriguing additions to what is, you know, an open world stealth combat game. It sounds like there's a lot of freedom and that's what the developers kept emphasizing when they were interviewed by various other people later. And honestly, like, I'm there for it. If this turns out to be able to be something where you can really do a whole bunch of stuff and the combat turns out to be as good as it looks in this trailer, eh, I'm there. And number two is Phantom Hellcat, an absolutely fantastic looking hack and slash. There's a ton of visual style here in Phantom Hellcat, but I think like what really has me intrigued is that it's a 2D platformer that transitions into this 3D, really close quarters, almost like platinum games looking hack and slash stuff. And that sounds fantastic to me. That is a combination of two of my favorite types of games. And again, it's something that looks absolutely Absolutely great. Apparently, the developers um, called Ironbird actually drew a lot of inspiration from Nier. So, great. That's good. That's what I want. And finally, at number one, it's Dead Island 2. Yes, Dead Island 2 was announced like eight years ago. No, I'm not even going to count this as cheating just because it would be really easy to assume that a game announced eight years ago wasn't happening. Even though there have been little inklings throughout the years that it's still being developed, that doesn't mean, you know, most people are thinking about it. A lot of the time, what comes after a development hell like the one this game has been through is also very 
different than what was intended at the start. And yeah, I mean, it looks like a hack and slashy type first person shooter with zombies. We know what Dead Island is at this point, and if they manage to wow us with Dead Island 2, I think cool. But if they manage to just give us another game like the first one, but better, also, I'm pretty psyched. Honestly, I like that island. I'm actually happy to see it rising from the dead. Quick bonus for you, uh, Moving Out 2. If you're familiar with the first Moving Out, it's this really bizarre multiplayer, I hesitate to call it Moving Simulator, but maybe Moving Competitive Double Dare type thing. I don't know, it's a fun game. And a new one is coming out, supposedly a lot bigger and better. And finally, the last bonus we have for you is Wyro's song coming to us from Something Wicked Games, which is made up of people that were involved in some pretty big games, Fallout, Fallout New Vegas, which is a new studio made up of people who worked on Fallout 3, New Vegas, Skyrim, Dragon Age Inquisition, Fallout 4, and Outer Worlds. Like, lots of big games with this beautiful but like haunting hand-drawn apocalyptic trailer i don't know exactly what type of game it is but i'm very intrigued i do very much look forward to seeing more about wyro song that's all for today leave us a comment let us know what you think if you like this video click like if you're not subscribed now's a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription so click subscribe don't forget to enable all notifications and as always thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks